Well, let's do a video on the blood vessels. We're talking about the tubes that come off the heart. So I've done a lot of videos on the pulmonary and the systemic circuit, um, so and even the coronary. So let's talk about these, these tubes that are running down or coming back to the heart or the ones going away, away from the heart. All right. So... Um, and what I'm going to do next is, if you look behind me over here, I'm going to do a video where I point out the vessels on the mannequins because my students are going to have to do a practical where they go from station to station. They identify, I will have tags labeled here. We'll have tags at the different blood vessels. It's one of the standard traditions of human anatomy and physiology. Brought to you by Curious Brandland. So we have, let's uh, move down, and here's our basic agenda. And uh, hopefully you won't make this video too long. It's a lot of PowerPoint slides, but some of them I'm going to say pause, and uh, that's more for my students. Anyone else watching would love to get your feedback. So let's look at how this works. Again, these are basic terms. I'm not going to talk about perfusion this much, but I will be talking about bifurcate and venous return. One of the things that we need to grasp, and I used this slide in an earlier video, uh, think about we're talking about arteries are branching out. We use that means they bifurcate. They are going to split. Versus venous return is vessels kind of coming down. They're going to get larger. They're going to start small and get larger. So this is the theme I've said numerous times in class, and we'll continue. So let's look at this is a quick overview, and then again, systemic pulmonary. Now we want to talk about really we're going to really focus on what's ha what is this. And what is all this coming back? We'll, we'll kind of skip this other than identifying where they are. So, and I'm going to do the arteries first and then the veins. When I do the models, I'm going to do both of them. So we have coming off the aorta, coming off the aorta are a bunch of tubes. So here's your first bifurcation going this way and this way, and then you're going to see a bi another split. Now, some theorists would say this is a true bifurcation, seeing that there's three tubes. You see the uh, abdominal aorta is going to branch off into the common iliac, common iliac, and then later become the femoral, and then branches are going to go, go further down into the body. Don't forget your term deep and superficial. So you'll see the iliac, and then you'll see the femoral, and then you'll see a deeper femoral, and the, then the larger one. So there's another case where you have a bifurcation, and one's going deep. A lot of paired arteries, you have them branching off. And that's where you'll see terms like left and right. You'll see deep and uh, superficial. You'll see this one right here. That you'll see superior and inferior. So there's no branching, but this, these are these are going to be feeding certain blood vessels now, uh, certain organs. Let's remember some other terms feeding or supplying for arteries, and some collecting or draining for veins. So right now, everything I'm talking about is going to be things that are supplying blood, and I have a short little couple different slides. We're going to look at all these, and these are all should be from a list that my students are required to know, and if you're one of my students, you should maybe have this list out while watching the video. Pause the video. I'll put the PowerPoint on Blackboard as well. So let's continue. I'm back. I right, move myself over here. Now we let's get into the first branches. The big three coming off the heart are going to be first. You got your aorta. Let's not forget about that. Um, so you got the ascending aorta. It's we're talking about systemic vessels. We know it begins when the blood leaves the left ventricle, going through the aortic semilunar valve. And first thing you're going to see is the coronary arteries. I did another video on coronary circuit, and I'll put the link. You can click the link in a second on this video. Uh, aortic arch, and then the descending aorta. This is going down. All right, the descending aorta is going to, at this point, it's the thoracic. But then once it goes past the diaphragm, it's going to be called the abdominal. So we're going to talk about what goes, goes to the head and neck and then go to the abdominal. So here they are. Let's move myself over here. So we're talking about here, the aortic or ascending aorta. You've got, at this point, we have the arch. The big three, we've got 
the brachiocephalic, the left parotid, and the left subclavian. Now, if we were to draw, see, um, the, you get the left parotid, well, where's the right? Well, let's move over here. We're going to have this subclavian, the, the subclavian is going to go down, the right subclavian, I'll just say right subclavian. Now, you don't see it in this picture. The right subclavian is going to go down and supply the neck. If, as a matter of fact, the word clavian is in reference to clavicle, the clavicle bone. So the subclavian is right underneath the clavicle bone. And you also have a subclavian vein. Now that's going to be returning, returning ultimately collecting here. So, so this is the right, I'll just write S for subclavian. And then branching off, you're going to see the right carotid. And then the carotids are going to branch into what will be external and internal. We'll, let's, we'll actually look at that next. So let's look at... So this is just a quick review of the three that we just saw, the brachiocephalic, right? And you see right common our artery comes off, the right subclavian. Now the left subclavian, again, is the big trunk. Now that's going to actually be branching. That's going to be branching into your um, blood vessels that are going to vascularize your, your arms and, your, and a little bit of your chest. So let's, let's look at this. OK, so we got our brachiocephalic. Going here, and so here's the left carotid. Remember the um, so there's there's the left carotid. You get the right here. Let's do that, and let's look at the left subclavian. Remember they're going over this way. So as they start to branch subclavian, once once you get and see this the axillary bone as in your shoulder. Right, so once we're here, we're running. Let's do it on this side. Let's go to the right side. So as we start to go down, and I'm going to point this out and zoom in with the next one. So we have the axillary, and then once we're it's the same too. Getting in branches are bifurcating as we go along. They are supplying those 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 that tissue. So if we follow this, we're going to branch. So this is called a brachium. Think about the brachium. When we're in the anti-brachium, that's when you're going to split to the radius and over here on this side, the ulna. So that's follow the supply of blood. Now let's look at uh, this chart. Now this, this chart, let me bring it back. This chart, some, some students like it, some don't. So this is just a graphical representation. It's sending aorta. Okay. Now notice the aortic arch. So you got the aorta, and then you got the arch, and then this descending is going to be going down. It actually goes behind it, down through the diaphragm to the abdominal cavity. Now, when it's here, it's actually the thoracic aorta. So we got here's our here's the branches. I just drew these on the actual heart, but now we're looking. Okay, so play again. So here, let's look at here's one, two, three. That's a bad three, but okay. Here they are. That's the one, two, three that I've mentioned here. Here they are. One, two, three. And now going to the right side, to the left side. So you got the subclavian and the air, the pathway. And that's a good way of calling it. The path, of the pathway of the blood that I just drew was showing you this. Okay. And uh, we could do the same thing with the left side. And let's remember this. A lot of the arteries and veins are named. Uh, they're basically you're going to have a a subclavian that's a vein that's going to actually, if you let's go back, where are we? Break you over. There's a should be a subclavian that runs into. There's a we say runs into, not breaks off or branches. So let's look. I don't want to spend so much time on each one. This is uh, these are all pictures from the textbook, and if you're my students, hopefully you've been labeling these and practicing. So let's get away from the chart and look a little bit later. So we saw this before. Let's look at uh, hey coming off. So you have, if we can go back to here, so this is going to the head, the, the head. This is going to the neck and the, well this is going to the neck and this is also going to the arm. So this is heading to the arm. Remember the brachiocephalic, the, um, this trunk basically is going to go to the right subclavian. So let's first talk about these two. External and internal parotid. Now, these are one of the things that make it, ooh, they're not necessarily deep versus uh, superficial. And you definitely see that with the juggler. Um, so, 
look, supplies, this is named by where it, it supplies. And you'll notice the, the juggler, external, internal, are very similar. So this, uh, this is supplying blood to the superficial aspect of the, of the head. Now the internal is going to be supplying the blood and the eyes with, with uh, blood. Okay, so here they are. Let's follow. If we get that brachiocephalic, remember brachiocephalic, left, um, left carotid, and then subclavian going up, subclavian going over here. All right, and so we got your comments. So the what we see over here is. And let's follow the traces. You got all these different. So we expect you to know the external carotid and the internal carotid. Now, as you saw here, let's look at it. Let's see these blood vessels supplying blood. So let's let's get in here. Here's our external carotid, and then it's branching. It's going to here. Follow the blood. Follow the blood. Now, um, I'm going to erase that so you can see. The internal carotid. So, see the internal carotid underneath there. Now, what you can't see is see all this. This is where the blood is going. It's going to all this, and all the blood here is supplying the brain. The internal juggler does the same. You actually see it, and it runs parallel with the common carotid. We don't call it external internal at this point until it bifurcates. Here's where it is bifurcating. One's going superficial. One's going deep. So this is just a quick little review. Any of the PowerPoint slides that aren't pictures, pause the video to give yourself a little better frame of reference here. Now let's work our way down and the subclavian. I, I kind of already drew everything, so I'm not really going to show this again, other than showing a zoom in on the picture. Let's look at it. All right, so here we are. Again, starting with your right subclavian, it would be over here. You've got your carotid and then the right um, the left subclavian would be over on this side, so you get your left carotid. And I should point out where you saw the juggler, I was this view, carotid, not uh, the carotid. You also have, the, your, remember, you have a left and a right, so that picture was only looking at a lateral view. All right, now, so here's your axillary. And then when you're, you're in the axillary, really from here to you first see a branch coming off. And, so, and we actually will name the brachia. Usually people will name the brachial artery when you can trace it to the branching of the radius and the ulna. So next, lower limbs. And I don't spend as much time with this, but we have, you'll, you gotta start with the, the first branch coming off. Here's the inferior mesenteric. So this is pretty much your abdominal aorta right here. And then you got the common iliac, iliac associated with the iliac bone. And then as you go further down, you have your femoral. One's going to go further deeper. That doesn't sound right. One's going to go deep. One's going to continue. And it's going to continue. One thing about that that's interesting with the veins, the uh, we'll talk about the saphenous vein in a second. How there's a similar area where it's I shouldn't say branching, but where it's running into the saphenous veins running into and in, of oh, the common iliac vein. So let's. Pause for the video if you need to. So let's talk about veins now. Um, I should point out the mesentery here. I thought I had a, let's go back to this. The Here's the mesentery one here, the superior, and here's the inferior. And this just kind of talks about the text that's going on here. So, All right, I'm going to pause. All right, so arteries and veins usually run parallel to each other. So one is supplying and one is returning. One is supplying and one's returning. And this is, again, a lot of times you'll see veins that are in sets of two. And you'll see a deep and a superficial. Now, arteries are going to be deeper than veins. And, but then you, when you have these paired veins, you'll allow us to see one's going to be superficial and one runs deep. So let's kind of review. See, the same thing we just did for arteries and veins. But uh, now I'm going to talk about the return. I did the arteries when we did this. Blue, we had that little box. So let's... If we're here, well, that's the end place. Here. And that's where we're ultimately going to go. So if, I can, if I'm talking about the head and neck, following it down. If I'm talking about below, now this is, this is actually um, blood. This is actually the whole 
tributaries of the basically of the head and neck. So we need we need another one to show the below. And here we are, the inferior vena cava. So you notice they said superior, inferior. Again, anything below the abdominal cavity and um, in the abdominal cavity is going to be returning this blood here. You see the iliac, you see the, um, the left and right iliac. And I'm not going to use the chart as much. So let's jump down and let's find some stuff. So I'm actually starting at the end point, right? Here's the brachiocephalic, same one. The brachiocephalic are the, and you have the left and the right. They're the two largest ones outside of the vena cava. And then if we're going to, let's do this. Let's do the upper, let's do, say we're some blood. It's going to be returning. It's going to be re returning. It's going to be returning from the radial and the ulna. All right, then I'm doing a bad job. And so there's the, you see the brachial, there's the axillary. Okay, and the blood's returning to the heart that way. Now, if we're down here, let's say we're at the femoral or the greater saphenous. So here's the femoral vein, and the greater saphenous is actually a deeper, deeper vessel, and it's basically the smaller one is below the kneecap. All right, so this is running in, this is running in, this blood's here, and we'll talk about the hepatic portal in a, a little bit later on. So blood's now what you don't see is. We need to, this blood actually gets filtered in to the liver. The liver is not here. But ultimately, once it's done, it's going to go into the atrium, just like the superior vena cava. So let's, quick reminder, small veins uh, are going to drain, and they're going to drain into larger veins, all right? And this, so the internal external juggler, this is kind of what I was talking about before, and I, didn't, I don't think I said it that well, but they are going to be collecting blood. So the superficial one, and the, ex and the external, the difference between these two is the internal juggler is actually something you see running down. It runs parallel with the carotid, the common carotid. Now, so we're looking going up here, the external juggler is actually deeper. And this is where it can be a little tricky. Now, you'll see this on the models. So this is what we're talking about. If you're right, so we have our right subclavian, think about subclavian, think about the clavicle bone, subclavian. Blood's going in this direction. You know, same thing. Blood's coming in this. When they're at this part where they're getting ready to combine, notice I'm saying combine, not branch. Branch means bifurcate, means bigger vessel becoming small. That's arteries. We're talking about veins. So let's follow. See, all this blood here is actually going to be um, draining here. Let's see if you can follow it. See this? The external juggler. So just like these vein, these vessels are going to be blood's coming here. Let's trace it. Now, what's inside? See this? This right here. All this, the sinus, the superior sagittal sinus. That blood is going in. It's going to follow, follow. It's going to go into the internal juggler. And there we go. All right. So. I'm going to wrap up so this video is taking a little bit longer than I expected. But, so I kind of drew these here, so I'm not going to talk about them as any. And let's look at uh, venous drainage from the abdominal. So you've got all of this. you got the different, you got your phrenic veins, you've got your gonadal veins. you got, oh, basically, if you're one of my students, you should be definitely checking out the hepatic vein. The, you see the iliac. And again, on our test, we're going to either have a picture, we'll identify these, or we're going to use the models wherever we can. So inferior vena cava, as we said earlier, collects the blood from below the diaphragm. And I want to finish by just pointing out the hepatic portal. Now, there, I, there's so many YouTube videos. There's ones that you can see. They'll see a ton of videos that spend a lot more time. I'm going to spend just about a minute. So you got the inferior uh, mesenteric vein, the superior one. These are you're looking at all these different capillaries. And now the big thing about this is we expect you to know all this blood for the hepatic portal. So the hepatic portal vein. I'll show it on the model. The gastric, the splenic. So this is coming from the stomach. This is coming from the spleen. These two, the these superior mesenteric. The inferior is going to be the, the large intestines, and the small 
uh, superior is going to be the large intestines. They're going to be draining that blood from there, and that's what I want you to see here. So here's the superior. You'll notice it's with the small intestines. So blood is going, and nutrients, they're all coming here. Okay, the inferior is going to be the large intestines. If you see it right here, here. And so follow the blood, follow the blood. And now we're talking about the hepatic portal system. So here's the hepatic, hepatic portal. And so if you look, you see this tube going in here. And then inside here, you have the hepatic veins. Now these veins, this, all the nutrients are going to filter through here. It's going to get rid of waste. And then it gets dumped all into the inferior vein. It's cava, and blood goes back up there. All right, that's pretty much it. I know this is pretty much a long video, but I'm going to make a second video that's a companion video to this. It's going to be shorter, and I'm going to be pointing out as many, many as I can, many structures as I can, um, for the on the model. So we'll probably start here, where we're familiar, and then go out. We'll go up, and we'll look at the models. All right, thanks for.